This is Miss Betty. She's a 28 or 29 year old Harlequin McCall. Ah! This is my little rescue bird. She's my success and story. And you'll play with my fat. You'll play with my necklace. All right. Okay. This is Miss Betty. She's approximately 30 years old. She's a Harlequin McCall. She's a rescue bird. When my friend Kenny found her, he was at a bird show, and he said that she was in a parakeet cage, a lot like this one. Her head was, she was bald. She didn't have any feathers. Her head was scraping the top of this cage. Her tail, she didn't have any tail feathers. Her butt was dragging in the bottom of this cage. And he had to cut her out of the cage. He bought her for $200, and he got her home, and she was, he had to cut the top of the cage off and take her out of the cage, and her feet were frozen to the perch. He had to cut the perch off and slide her feet out of it. These people bought her as a breeder bird and when they figured out that she was a harlequin they put her in this cage in a closet for 17 years. Years. No socialization, no human contact. They threw wild bird seed and water into her cage when they thought about it I guess. And Kitty got her, her fingernails were grown in complete circles and it's taken several years to get her feet to where she could walk. When Kenny first got her, she couldn't even walk. He had to carry her around wrapped in a towel because she was hurt so badly. It took him several thousand dollars, a bunch of trips to the vet to get her fixed. Her beak, she was scissor beaked so badly, her bottom beak grew up and stuck up over the top of this of her top beak and her top beak was growed around the bottom of her chin and she only had a little hole right here on the side of her mouth where she could eat and drink and she was terrified of everything that moved. Kenny, she, everything. He went and bought her a, a big cage, like a, you know, a six by five foot cage and every time he would get near her she would just fall in the bottom of the cage and tremble and hide. It took him a couple years to get her to come out of the cage and her cage has a play top so she get on top of the cage and play, but she was still scared of everything. And then he, he went through some rough times where he had to get rid of her, so he gave her to me. And when I got her, when she came to me, she had a couple, you know, her wing feathers were coming in, her tail feathers were coming in, but her nutrition was, her body was still so weak that her feathers were split down the middle. She didn't know how to preen. She didn't know how to flap her wings. She didn't know how to do anything. She was a shell. And it's taken us, uh, we've had her for three years now, and her feathers have come in beautifully. She's fully feathered now. She can walk. Her feet are still damaged. She can't grip very well. If I was to bend over right now, she would fall right off of me because she can't grip very, very good. But um, she's, um, she gets out and walks with me now. She goes for rides in the car with us now. She still won't let anybody touch her but me, and she freaks out when I touch her too fast. But I, what I'm trying to say is people see these beautiful birds and they want one because they are. They're gorgeous. They're exotic. They're very, they're very high maintenance animals though. To have one as sweet as she is, they need to be out of the cage 12 to 16 hours a day. They're called companion birds because that's what they are. They, they're flock animals. They want to be with you at all times. And if you stick them in a cage and you forget about them and you just feed them every now and then, they pull their feathers. They're smart enough to be psychotic. They'll get psychotic and cage bound. And the, the vet bills are very expensive. Their cages are very expensive. To feed them properly is kind of expensive. They need lots of human companionship. They need lots of love, lots of time. They're highly destructive. They're very loud. My cockatoo <coughs> over there on the tree, they pull their feathers out if they don't get enough attention. They'll pull out their feathers. But what I'm trying to say to people is please don't buy a bird from a pet shop or a pet store or a breeder. If you, if you just have to have one, type in avian rescue shelters in your area and there's probably five within a 20 mile radius of your house. There are so many there are more bird shelters than there are dog shelters, cat shelters, because people buy these animals and then they realize that they're not as pretty. They're not, they're a lot more work than they are pretty. They're a lot of work. They're, they're God's creatures and they have personalities and they have feelings and, and they, they need, just like a dog, just like your kid, if you want a two-year-old on your hip for the next 80 years of your life, 
then you you need a bird. But unless you're ready to be a mother to a two-year-old until you die, you know, and I mean, put them in your will to your, my son will get my birds when I die, and he will probably end up leaving the birds to his kids when he dies because they live that long, and they want to be on you all the time. They need you all the time. And if you have a job, if you go to school, if you have a life, then you don't need a bird because they have to be part of your life. Don't they, baby? But get one from an avian shelter. Get one that needs a home already. Get one that's already been abandoned by someone and, and bring them back to life. This little girl here was so rewarding because she was just a shell. She was a shell of an animal when I got her and I've watched her blossom into this beautiful creature it loves me she adores me more than my cockatoo does because I saved her and she knows it but get get one from an animal shelter don't buy one don't promote the exploitation of these exotic creatures and please don't put them in a cage if you've got to have one and you got to put them in a cage they should have enough room to spread their wings out completely and stretch like this and they should have enough room to stretch up and they should have enough room to climb around and they should have a play top on their cage so they can get out of their cage and have a safe place to play. And that's, that's, <laughs> and that's Geronimo Bird. He's, he's a rescue bird, too. Yeah. That's, that's Geronimo. <laughs> that, I, that's all I want to say. Is please don't promote the exploitation of these creatures. God didn't make them to be our our pets he didn't make them to be put in a cage God put them in trees and that's where they should be so if you have to have one make sure pan over and show Goliath and Geronimo this is where they need to be if you have to have one they need to be in a place in an environment where they can have a tree to climb in they can have an aviary to go and climb in and they need to have a place in every room in your house there should be a place for your bird and that's it. <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful story, Chris. Thank you so oh much. Oh, my God, it all. I know. You going to bite my nose? You going to bite my nose? You going to play my necklace? Okay. I'll let you. Pretty girl. You can give me kisses. Hi, Betty. What they do? Just feed her. They stuck her in a freaking closet, and I think they just gave her enough to exist. And I, we don't really know. My best friend was at a store with his Quaker parrot on his shoulder, and this lady walked up to him and said, "I've got a a macaw. If you want it, follow me home with two hundred dollars and take her." And he said he walked into the house, walked into the closet, and she was. He said he bought her because she looked like she said he 